What's your status on the apparatus? Puncho, DK, Cancel Kings. We want to thank everybody for coming out tonight for this special presentation. We're going to be talking about some things that are, are critical to our community and just looking at the media and some things that have been impacting us recently, specifically from a, a news article and some press releases from the Daily Voice. We got DK here too. Um, and some folks that are going to be on the panel. So we're looking forward to hearing from them. We'll have some introductions and talk to them also. Um, some things we're going to talk about today, guys, in our different segments. Uh, the story of Nassan. He had an accidental death um, that happened around Easter. And we're going to get, dig a little bit deeper into that and how the media, frankly, mishandled his death. And how that was, uh, how that was portrayed in what, what, frankly, was probably not the best way. In addition to that, how media represents and how it presents men and sometimes the wrong the wrong light and also other folks in our community. Dignity and death. Sometimes media has a power over our community and we want to make sure that people have dignity in death and that we're not giving people the wrong. Um, we're not misrepresenting people when they're going through, especially their families are going through a difficult transition like that. And of course, uh, community accountability. There is a level of, uh, of accountability that comes with community, but also the media has to have a level of accountability. So with that being said, DK, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you got for us, man? Yeah. Nah, man. Let's ready to jump into this, man. Uh, let, let me open us up in prayer and then we'll um, go from there. Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord, for your grace, Lord, your mercy, Lord. Um, Still praying for Nassan's family, Lord, as they're mourning, Lord, and we just ask, you know, that you just um can use us, man, to bring light to this situation, Lord, and Lord, we just want to say that we love you, Lord, we trust you, and we thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All yeah, right. man, yeah. so, um, thanks everybody for, you know, um, joining us, man, and we'll get to the introduction. You know what I mean in a second, but you know, I just want to um, you know, I knew the song. You know what I mean personally. You know what I mean like you know for years. You know he had uh, came to the center. You know I was mom personally, and you know just man, a great kid, a great adult, a great father. You know what I mean, a great brother. You know what I mean like that's who he was. You know what I mean and. It really disturbed me. Like it, it disturbed me, you know, when I end up reading this article to the heart, right? When I, when I read it, I was like, and I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna get this delight of day. And then my dad, he ends up, um, he ends up calling me, and he was upset. And my dad, you know, he don't get upset about nothing. You know what I mean? He ends up hitting me up, and I'm like, we gotta say something. So I called these gentlemen, you know, who, who are on here today. And just was like, you know, we, we got to address this because just it's just ignorance. You know what I mean? So, you know, we, we got some questions and we're going to just try to dive into this. We invited, um, you know, the lady who wrote the article. Um, she hasn't showed up yet. I don't know if she's going to show up later. But if she does, you know, maybe we can see where she was coming from. But it just, just was ignorant. So before I jump into it, man, I'm just going to give... Uh, Everybody a chance, you know, kind of introduce yourself. You know what I mean? So we'll start with uh, Pastor Lamont and just go down, you know, down the line. So bless you guys. Thank you, Poncho and DK for having me on this forum. My name is Pastor Lamont. I'm the senior pastor of Freedom of Christ Fellowship here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 137 North 10th Street. Um, and I'm just looking forward to uh, the commentary that we that we uh, uh, converse about tonight. I think this is a very important topic. And I thank you guys for drawing attention to it. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lamont. All right, James. Hey, good, good evening, everybody. Uh, you know, I appreciate you guys having me here as well. Uh, my name is James Hawkins. Uh, I'm originally from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, I was in law enforcement in Pennsylvania for 21 years um, in an urban setting. So I kind of have that perspective to add to the conversation. Um, I currently live in Florida now. Um, I know quite a few people on the panel. Um, grew up with some of them, knew, knew, knew them for quite a while. So uh, it's good to see you guys and uh, excited about having a good conversation this evening. 
All right. Thank you, James. Uh, Sherrod? Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate y'all having me on tonight. My name is Sherrod Baltimore. Uh, born and raised in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm a firearms instructor. I uh, train civilian, military, and police um, all across the country. I'm MOPEC, NRA, and uh, USCCA certified. I'm also a community activist, uh, Virginia State graduate, um, and definitely very excited to partake in this conversation tonight. All right. Thank you. Jalen? Good evening, everybody. My name is Jalen Washington. Uh, got out not too long ago, but United States Marine, and work with Mr. DK with the kids, you know, before and after school program, the pre-K program. And again, excited to talk on this topic and dive into it. My man, my man. Tom, Commissioner Tom, I'm sorry. Good evening and thanks for having me. Uh, I see some familiar faces. My name is Tom Connolly. I'm currently an elected official here in Swatair Township. I'm a commissioner. But my role tonight is more as a, a community activist and somebody that's been involved in the community. Um, DK and James uh, were, were neighbors of mine at different times and we've been involved in programs uh, with youth for many years. And uh, this article came across my timeline and it was something that uh, you know I was very disappointed about. And uh, I'll, I'll just end it there. And uh, again, thanks for having me. We also have, uh, guys, we're also live on Facebook, uh, YouTube. You can check us out there at Cancel Kings. You can leave your comments. Uh, we're going to read every single comment that we get uh, as long as they're, they're done with grace and dignity. And we have a comment from uh, Miguel. It says, I'm here to chime in and speak on my little brother. And it seems like on behalf, just want to say I appreciate you guys for taking your time to shine light on this situation because this one was hard a hard one for us. Nassan was a great kid and such a humble soul. So feel free to leave your comments on Facebook. Feel free to leave your comments on YouTube. We also uh, have a platform on a uh, on Instagram and X, uh, formerly known as Twitter. What you got for us, DK? Yeah, no. So I just want to, um, I just want to start, you know, um, like I said, I want to share this you know, know the story. You know, I really, like I said, give it any light, but you know, we just have to because you know, what I mean, just because it's ignorant. You know, what I mean, because it's ignorant. I'm going to pull up the um, pull up the article. Um, her, the lady who wrote the article, her name was uh, Jillian, and um, this man. I don't even know where to start with it, but let me just read it. That, that's that's what I do. And this is this is how she starts the article off, right? And I'll pull up on the screen here in a second. But it says, um, well, "Let's add the article to the stage real quick. Let me know when you're ready, DK." Yeah, I was ready. There we go. Of course, and one thing about this this news outlet, right? Um, Daily Voice is it's really just not real journalism, right? And it just, it has all these ads, you know, I got to click off it just to read it. But this is what bothered me the first, you know, it starts off, it says a 22-year-old convicted drug dealer. You know what I mean? So here, this, you know what I mean? This young man just loses his life in an accident, right? In an accident. And if, if you see up here, it has the, um, has obituaries and police and fire, right? But in here, you know, they put it on a police and fire. But it's an accident. If you look at, you know, and I'll pull up some yeah. um, articles that the same lady wrote on the same day, and they're in accidents, but it's under obituary. But in here, it's under police and fire, right? And, you know, it's just trash. This trash media, you know what I mean? Instead of you know, giving condolence to the families. It's, it's none of that in here. There's, there's no condolences. There's no, I'm sorry for your loss. You know, it's just them giving his 
all of his mistakes, right? And 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 I'm not, I'm not even gonna give the article the time of day to read it. You know what I mean? Well, but, I, well, I, well, I want to reiterate he, again. He mm-hmm. died of an a, a car accident, and yeah. I could see if he, if he was getting into like a Bonnie and Clyde shootout, you know, or something of that nature. None of that happened with this young man. He was coming home from work from 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 my understanding, and let, you guys let me know if it was something different. He was riding to uh, an, another venue with a friend and just got into a simple car accident right around the time of Easter. I think it was a, uh, the day before Easter. Now. Mm-hmm common sense would dictate in a situation like that, it should be something like an obituary. Someone died unfortunately. We've all got difficulties and we've all have, we all have our past, but none of that warrants us being drugged through the mud and going back through our lives with, a, with a, a microscope and finding out what we did back when we were second graders to our teachers. And that's what it seems like is happening uh, with articles like this, and it, and it seems like it's it's a revisionist history. Now, maybe that's the policy of of uh, the Daily Voice. But as we look a little bit closer and as we dig a little bit deeper into some of the articles that we're seeing that are published not only by uh, Jillian and some of the other articles on this particular site, there's a lot of inconsistencies on what gets reported and the kind of people <laughs> that it's reported on. Sorry to interrupt, DK, but I just wanted to add that in there. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I appreciate it because you know when when I when I when I think of it, I'm like you know, depending on you know just by looking at you know this lady's articles, you know, not just on the sign, but I looked at her other articles. It just depends on what side of the bed that she wakes up on, and that decides on which how she's going to report it. You know, you know, like for me, you know, there's a lot of things that I, I'm in my life. You know, whether my father. You know, business owner, whatever you want to call me, but she could pick out and say, "Hey, um, hey, you know, DK, you know, DUI, blase, blase, crashed, did this." You know, what I mean, can can pull up, you know, whatever criminal record that I might have, and that's the whole picture that you know that she gives. Because if if you look at the article, she doesn't give anything else about him. You know, what I mean, except for you know, what I mean, the the mistakes that he might have made in his life, and it's like. We can't. I, I'm, I'm just not okay with that. So basically, my um question to the panel, man, and Lamont, I'm gonna um I'm gonna pass it to you first, man, and then we'll go around, you know, to everyone else. But my but my question is like, um, why do you think you know the media chose to list the sign under police and fire, right, instead of obituary? Quite frankly, uh. I'm taken back by the article. Uh, nobody wants to be known for their worst act. And quite frankly, none of us are our worst act. But we live in a day and age where everything is about clickbait. It's about uh, who can who can draw the most attention, who can get who can get the most eyes placed on them uh, with the with the, the most crazy headline that they can have. But there, back in the day, there was a thing called journalistic integrity. Um, people who had who, who wrote articles and things of that nature, uh, they had an integrity with them. They didn't. They they wanted to state the facts. They wanted to be clear and concise about uh, all aspects of of the people. But for this lady to jump on here and do this, um, it's just a sad thing. It's a sad thing, and I think that you know um, her presence, not not here on this evening speaks volumes. I think that she knows on some level that uh, there was just no journalistic integrity in terms of the article itself. And I think it's just very sad, but that's the day and age that we live in. People don't write things for information, but more than anything, they write things for a quick hit or a like, you know, nobody's writing things to inform people. They're writing things for popularity. And I think that 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 opens up a door for people like this to be able to um, write articles like this. Hmm. That's that's a very interesting observation, and I'm I'm going to touch on that a little bit later on too. Um, a Facebook user says Nassan treated me like his little sister. If you knew him, y'all know how humble and real he is. He stood on business with the people he loved, and he cared deeply about. I don't understand why people only see the bad in others when God gives many people chances and forgives. This doesn't. This world doesn't understand life or God, and I hope that 
one day they will. My brother was nothing but good. Now, we want to continue to throw that question around um, and maybe Jaylen, you can you can tackle it and then we're going to throw it around the panel. But same question to everyone. How have we how, how have we gotten to the point that we can have journalists or bloggers or whatever the case may be, because it, it seems like uh, the Daily Voice isn't a local news source. It's kind of a conglomerate that happens to have seeds around different parts of the Northeast and they happen to just report news. That's that's primarily online and they throw ads over it and kind of make money, not a real strong local news familial presence. But passing that question to Jalen and the other folks on the presence, how do we get to this point where these kind of things can happen? Again, just to piggyback off the, a couple of the brothers that already spoke that I don't see why it was necessary to even, and I don't even want to try to make an excuse for why the article was even made, but just like you know, Poncho said earlier, it's one thing if it was drug related, shootout related, police related, and it, you know, it wasn't at all. It was just like something that could have happened, you know, tomorrow, something that could have happened while we was on our way here to get on this panel today, uh, you know, a freak accident that, that happened, and that's how it should have been reported as an accident, there was no absolute need for anyone's personal information or their past to be brought up. So I really don't even have a legitimate answer to the question because there is no reason to list it under police and fire. Mm. Now, is, is it possible that, that maybe it was an honest mistake. Do you do you guys is is it possible to give um, this this article or this this news outlet grace? Maybe it was a mistake. What are you guys What are you guys' thoughts on that? Is it maybe they they, they should rescind this article or do a, uh, they should revise it and maybe move it? I mean, they do retractions all the time in the news. You never hear about it, but maybe it's just a simple matter of us putting out this podcast and them doing a retraction. But uh, what do, what are you guys' thoughts oh. on that? Let's t let's take it to to Jay to Jay uh, to James and then to the other folks on the panel. All right. So um, I I didn't know Nassim personally, but um, I definitely want to send my condolences to his family and friends. You know, first off, um, I have a different take on the uh, police and fire section. You know, mm -hmm. having this article because it was an You're accident, a cop, right, James? So you 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 have a yeah. yeah let us know about and, that. It was an accident, so it being under, I don't agree with the article at all, the content of the article, but where it was placed, I can understand why I was in the police and fire, because it was an accident, and somebody was killed. That's fire-related. So hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think that was that, I don't think that part, that's, I don't think that's something we need to focus on anyways. I think we need to focus on the, the content of what was, you know, in the article, because there, there was no reason for it. I agree with Lamont. I think it was a, a clickbait, you know, move. Um I'm, I'm guessing monetarily driven, you know, that, like you said, there were ads in the article. As soon as we, <laughs> you first pulled up, there were ads popping up. So obviously they are, like you said, they are making some money off it. So um, why, I don't know. I would love to get the answer to that question, but there's only one person that knows why, you know, why they did yeah. that. Um, oh, good. Real quick, just uh, the no. other thing. Uh, okay, Puncho, ahead, you asked, well, real quick, Puncho, you asked how, how we got to this point how we got here, it's because we aren't doing things like this. Hmm. We're, not, we're not speaking out. We're not calling people out. You know, this day and age, we have, so, we, have, we have so much information, there's no reason that we should believe the lies anymore. Hmm. That's what we've been lied to and we get, we get lied to and we get information like this pushed upon us to, to, to form an opinion, to form a, a, a stereotype or a view. And it can't happen anymore. We need to step up and start, you know, Tell them what the truth is, you know, and, and disregarding things like this. Interesting. Interesting. Thanks. Hey, and James, real quick. James, real you quick. Um, but, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So DK, yeah, I can hear you, Matt. I'm going to throw it to you. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. No, hold on. I'm, I'm going to throw it to Matt, too. But, James, I just want to I want to say this real quick, James, is because my issue is, is that I heard what you said. I understand it's a, it's a police thing. Hey, it was an accident. But then I, I see another article that she writes that's on the same day. And that article is the accident, the same, basically the same thing, but it's in an obituary section. So that that's what that's what bothered me. You know what I mean? It's like, why 
why is this here? Why is this in this section? And why is that in this section? And we're going to cover that a little later because they, they both have, you know, whatever criminal backgrounds, this and that. They Both of these individuals had where you could have pulled up, hey, this was negative ongoing case or what, you know, whatever mm. it is. But in the other case, it's an obituary. And in his case, it's in fire and police. And and I want to I want to throw it to uh, Matt right. Um, yeah, I want to throw it to Matt right here. And I want to ask you, Matt. Um, so I pulled up this other article, right? And same person. And um, I got no problem, no problem with um with this article is it, talking about. You know, it it, it was a uh, um you know a police a, you know amount of police horse. You know, uh, brother James here. You know, he had. You know, he was a K nine enforcer, and 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 a part of you know the the part of the, the police force. But here, DK, you know, I, I think here, DK, I, human, I, I think your mic is uh, coming a little bit uh, choppy, DK. I'm gonna um, I'll take it for a second if you guys can hear me a little clear. If you guys can hear DK, give me a a, a thumbs up. If you're having a hard time hearing DK, no, uh, we hear you. You hear me, or can you hear me clear? We hear you. We do okay. not hear him. DK's a little choppy, so DK, crack the whip over there. Make sure the kids aren't playing too much Fortnite. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at this article here, and, and DK kind of move it around as I'm talking, and we see an actual obituary here, right? And this is from the same outlet. This is Daily Voice, the same, um, quote-unquote, journalist. And if you can scroll up a little bit, DK, you can see where it says here that this is a, an obituary for a dog. Oh, I'm sorry, not a dog. <laughs> but this is the obituary for a horse that died. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. This is a horse that was uh, that, that that ended up dying or was killed in action, and this horse gets a proper obituary in this in, in this uh, in this quote unquote news outlet. Now I want you to think about your family. I want you to think about your friends. I want you to think about your loved ones your mentors, your mentees, depending on what side of the bed, like DK said earlier, this journalist or other people that may be under the influence of this particular outlet wakes up on that day. You may be in the police section and someone ridiculing you about something you did five years ago or yesterday, or you may be in an obituary. But if you're a horse, you may be good to go. Now, is this the kind of stuff that, that our communities are letting, let, are, are letting um, fly? Is this the kind of material that we're approving? Is this is this where we are? Is, is this is this the point that we've come to as a society? And this really makes me upset because we're giving more honor to animals than we are to people. Again, this young man didn't go and 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 do mass murder. Okay, he died in a in a car accident, and he's not given the dignity of even an obituary. Something is wrong with that. We're going to throw it over to um, to uh, to uh, Tom Connolly and, and let me know your thoughts on this, because I don't want to get too fired up too early here. Uh, well, I think I'm about to get fired up. This is my uh, opinion on this. Um, in news, there used to be a saying that if it bleeds, it leads. Mm. So it's about sensationalizing um, this, as you say, so-called journalist. And again, I'm not impressed. I believe knew exactly what was going on here um, to dig into a criminal record when it was a car accident, not involving a crime that that takes some work. And you can tell by the article, the person isn't somebody that works hard or has integrity, mm. but then they put a picture up and I think the picture was put up to have shock value and that shock value well, was going too. to be, was, was going to be, shot. It, right. It, it's a, it's a mug shot and it's a young black male. And the, the, the idea is to get traffic, to get clicks. Like you said, clickbait. Um, I'm not saying it's always based on race, 
But that's something that a lot of people, especially ugly people that think ugly things, would stop on and have an interest. And um, there, there's an interesting thing that I noticed. Um, if the person's skin is white and they have facial tattoos, they somehow get lumped into a, a different category also. So it's somebody making a decision that this person looks a certain way that I can sensationalize something bad about that person. And and then people will look at my page and they'll like it and they'll converse and they'll share it. So, um, you know, I don't know if, if it's ironic that I'm the first one to go there, but I have a feeling if the, the skin color on that picture was different, I honestly feel like it would not have hit the news. And, and I, I really wish that the person that wrote that would appear tonight because mm. I think that's, I think that's a fair fair question and everybody knows i taught like it is but i'm gonna tell you one quick story james hawks hawkins is an incredible man in our community we were having issues with the older elected officials and race and we were looking to put basketball courts in next to, to jimmy hawkins house and while we were at a community meeting a woman said and i don't know james if you remember this she said I'm concerned about the drug dealers in the neighborhood. And she described a very large black man who pulled into the school parking lot at night and sold drugs. And it turned out to be James Hawkins, who was considerate working a night shift that parked across the street and walked to his home. So, I mean, it's, it's out there. And now, unfortunately, now hold, now hold on. Um, there, there may be some validity to that story because I've asked James to bring me some Pepto Bismol once. <laughs> I, I don't think that was what she was getting at, oh, um, but, okay. but it was very humorous that someone like, like Jimmy, who was a coach and had two kids in the youth program who was attending the meeting to make the community better for all the children was subject to a completely unfounded, ugly accusation. Hmm. Um, before, before James gets a chance to, to chime in on that, uh, Matthew, rumor has it that you're a journalist. You know that there's a level of integrity that goes into journalism. How do we yeah. get from point A to point Z where something like this falls through the cracks? Well, to be honest, it doesn't fall through the cracks. It happens right in front of our face all the time. I think we're just you now using our platforms to step up about it. Um, I heard one of the men in this uh, panel say that we use everything for clickbait. That's not right. For the last two years that y'all saw me putting feet to the ground, trying to get the real story, not trying to spin it, try to give it to the community, um, factual. And we do make mistakes. As journalists, you make mistakes. It's one thing you never want to do, but it happens, especially if you're trying to cover breaking news. But what she did was no mistake. I compared an article she wrote that same day about a lady who died in an accident in Lancaster, who it was written beautifully as a white woman who left behind three kids. It didn't say in, in, uh, in, his, in, in his article, it did not say a young man who left behind kids, which he did. He just recently had a baby. So for you to taint his image to his Hey, Matthew, family, here's, that, here, here's that person. We don't want to use her name because we do want to keep dignity in the people in the community. But you're absolutely right. This person had a, they had a rap sheet. They had things that were going on in their past. Died on the same day, just like you said. But somehow... Yeah, I wasn't even going to dig into that fact. Yeah, I was just, but somehow, I was, I was, yeah. Okay. But but going to your point, somehow this individual was not afforded the same level of exposure as another individual was, and that because seems to be a little bit to entice. Sorry, exactly. That seems to be a little bit impartial. Going back to what what Tom was saying, they went and found a, a nice you know Facebook picture. They talked to the person's family. This was not done in the, in, in, in the case of Nassam. None of that happened for him. Didn't even attempt to, as far as I know. She was and afraid. Say again? She was afraid. To, to add on to your point, if I could, because I was You still, think it was fear? No. Uh, nobody knows Jillian Pecora. I try to look her up. I don't truly know. Isn't that her name? 
Yeah, her name her name is Jillian P Picora, I believe. Is that is that actual a writer's name? Because you know sometimes writers have like it could be a it could be a a, a swedalism or a, how do you call it uh, a, a writer's name? Yeah, or so something she has no connection to her community. So to yeah. her, she doesn't see it as wrongdoing. Because believe it or not, journalists are told to to do that. To, well, she to, made to and, 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 in, and this is me speaking out of turn. I'm not a hundred percent certain of this. But she is a uh, she does come from a Muslim background. She identifies as a uh, a Muslim that comes from a, a Caucasian or a white background. So that tells me that she's she's a uh, Chechenian or Bosnian uh, Muslim. So that could be that could be the case also. And I'm not sure if that plays into it or not. Um, there's there's so many layers to this whole thing. But at the end of the day, like I said, she's waking up on one side of the bed and you see this individual that we're highlighting in this particular article. And like I said, we don't want to put the name out there, but she has a criminal, a criminal history, but it's, it's a puff piece and there's no, nothing negative that's, that, that's brought up. But then again, the same day, and it leads as if it's a hit piece. And this person was running from the police and died in a car accident. Unless you read the article properly, you'd never know the difference. Why? Why are things like that happening, Matt? And then we'll throw that same question over to um, to Pastor Lamont and the rest of the panel, and then we'll move on to our second segment. And the audience, please I'm feel free to continue to throw us your comments. We're going to continue to put them up on the screen and read them as they, they fit into the narrative here. Um, go ahead, guys. I'm trying to answer your question. I don't mm -hmm. think I got my full statement out. Say again, sir? I, I tried to answer your question, but I don't think I got my full statement out. Yeah, I, go I, ahead. Sorry, I, I, I'll I get love, a little excited, guys. And I, I love your moderation. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, go ahead. Um, as a journalist who covered this story, as a journalist where it hurt my heart to read that, as a journalist who made sure that his family saw his name spoken on high and mm -hmm. made sure that there was a billboard that said rest in peace to him because it hurt my heart yes. to read that. The man was going to go see his friend whose birthday it was and his friend was left hmm. on red because he thought that his friend didn't show up and lo and behold he's in the accident he's never going to see him again this is somebody's son that but it's not seen like that daily voice doesn't feel like anything was done wrong they will not let their writer issue a apology they will not let her retract her word because they're going to say that facts are facts even though the facts had nothing to do with the situation, that's how they're going to try to spin it. Because they'll say, well, was it factual? But what did it have to do with the situation? Nothing at all. But even when we step up and we talk about these situations in these panels and in these conversations, we have to do more. We have to protest. We have to make sure there's nobody that is that is reading them as a, as a credible source anymore. Like they are not connected to our community. Penn Live has way more um, community-based reporters than they do. I don't really see Daily Voice popping up to scenes. They are paid writers by a bigger conglomerate that is owned and is controlled media. So all controlled media wants to do is funnel people to their page. They're not worried about the community. Community. Mm. And and anybody else on the panel want to jump on that that particular question and 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 double back on that before we move on? Yes, oh, there were. But I'll, go ahead, Pastor. I'll go after you. Uh, first of all, Matthew, I I like to thank you for your due diligence. I like to thank you for being a journalist that shows integrity and doing your research and before you uh, print things and before you write things. But that's you. And there's a number of different people who don't carry your same integrity. And because we are in a, 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 a social media age, I feel that it gives people a liberty to do things that are crazy because they know they're never going to have to come in contact with these people. They're never going to have to be able to see people's face. You know, we live in a day and age where if a kid wants to ask another girl, a boy wants to ask a girl to the prom, he texts her and asks her. The same thing is going on in terms of a uh, 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 writing. These people don't care that 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 a uh, writer doesn't care anything about that young man because she's never going to have to come in contact with that young man. And that's why I, I really I really commend uh, Poncho DK and the rest of the rest of the panel for doing this because it is imperative 
that we continue to bring things like this to the attention. They, when, when they write articles like this, they're not writing these articles for smart people. They're writing them for people who desire instant gratification, easy clickbait, uh, uh, you know, but we have, we as people have to elevate our minds past uh, what, what the instant gratification that social media brings, you know, it wouldn't hurt if some of us put our phones down for a little bit, adults and children. Because I think that that's what sets up people like this to be able to do things like this because we're conditioned that way. Totally agree. But I thank you. But I thank you, Matthew. Oh, look, it is my honor to do it. Hmm. Guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Get this information out. Uh, we appreciate the, the, the support you're, you're giving to the family and to the folks who are being affected by this kind of an issue. Um, someone else yeah. wanted to go after. Oh. Um, yeah. After real quick. Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Sherrod, I'm going to give it to you real quick. I know you want to go. Can y'all hear me better now? Yeah, you're coming in clear. Yeah, man. I think I had all the Daily Voice articles pulled up. I think it was just messing my computer all up. So, you know what I mean, I'm not sure. But um, just to, just a math point, I just wanted to share this because the song's mom had uh, put this on here. And, you know, especially Matt, uh, we definitely thank you for all that you do. But I think she just wanted to say this. And she said, just thank you all for advocating, for bringing awareness to the, you know, discussing article. It said, it was no mistake. You know, she gets paid through mon monetization. Everyone who clicked on an article supported her. You know what I mean? She would not... Uh, release my response asking to take the article down out of respect uh, for me and my family, you know, and the thing is, you know, I, I, you know, I saw Tanisha, and she, um, you know, made a response and the lady didn't respond to her at, at, at all. You know what I mean? Just, just completely cowardness, you know? So, you know, it, I guess, you know, especially as men, you know, there's a lot of men on this panel, you know, as men in the community, you know, we have to step up and say something, you know? So, but man, I thank you because you you do step up for for everything in the community, no matter what's going on. You always there, so I appreciate you and thank you, man. Yeah, Sherrod, you got it. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're welcome. I'm sorry. I'm. Is it choppy? Is it my service? He was coming in clear for me. Okay, it was coming in choppy for me. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Uh -huh. You're welcome to everybody who said something about journalism. <laughs> All right, cool. Just to, um, on to the valid points that were made by everybody on the panel, um, I've heard the term clickbait used a lot. And the reason I can't relegate this article to strictly clickbait is I would understand if the title is what it was, but then the article has some substance to it. When you actually read the article, it's no longer clickbait because, OK, you already attracted attention through whatever picture you chose in the headline. But then the article is one thing with journalistic integrity to either highlight positives, maybe negative in your arguing balance or to keep it neutral. There's nothing positive or neutral in the article. You're listing convictions in an article that's supposed to be about an untimely death. You're listing charges he's fighting, which the ironic part about that is in this country, we're supposed to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. So you're listing charges he's facing that he could have hypothetically went to court and been not convicted of any of them and found innocent on all those charges. So how are they relevant at all? How are the, the convictions aren't even relevant, but at least if you want to list convictions, you can say, well, this is the court record. Here's what happened. It still has no place in an article like this, but the list charges that he hasn't had his day in court over yet. And at this point never will. That's where it stops being clickbait. That's something that's an agenda. That's much more nefarious because if you read this article, it has the tone of kind of setting, setting in the motion, the mindset of, okay, he died in an accident, but here's who he was. And it almost gives the tone of like, the world's better off because you might hear this accident and think, oh, that's terrible, but here's who this guy actually was. You listed nothing about a family. You listed nothing about accomplishments. You listed nothing about who he survived by, whether that's parents, whether that's children. Any, again, not even anything, pot, there's nothing neutral. He graduated this year. He was active here. He worked here. It's nothing but convictions and charges, and he died in an accident. That's not clear. That's 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 evil intent, and you're creating yes. a narrative about young black men. Agreed. And then, the and I'm a 
right on this last point. If you can make someone potentially not feel empathy for someone who died in a car accident, when we extrapolate this to maybe there's a police struggle, and this is coming from someone who trains police officers, so this is not bashing police, but if you see a young man who is in an incident with police officers, why wouldn't you assume if you read this article, well, that guy had to deserve whatever happened because the guy that died in the car accident also deserved it. So there's no way this other incident isn't deserved because the guy who didn't hurt anybody in his death, we talked about his criminal past. It's an agenda, and it's been a media agenda since we've been in this country for centuries. So um, that's what I got on that question. I wish I could Preach. clap right now. Great. Well, we might be able to help you out with that. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I think it's even broader. Um, I think this is something where it's information versus it's people in general. Um, I think I think um, is it. Is it Representative Conley? Is it? I'm sorry, I, I don't want to get your title wrong. Tom is fine. I'm a commissioner. Tom. No one needs to call me anything other than Tom. Okay, so Tom made a good point. This is something that happens to a lot of men in general. You know, this this is this is a men's forum. Just to, just to clarify for everybody, and we as men, we need to be able to to regain our image because we're seen as we're seen as as predators in society in a lot of cases. The same thing happened to another guy also. The same <laughs> the same journalist woke up on the bad side of the bed and did the same thing to another gentleman, right? And he wasn't a black guy, right? So this is something that's systemic. And this is something that's happening because it's just sloppy journalism and it's 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 a bad it's a bad faith approach to just handling information. And it brings me to the next point that we have here is what do we do? We've talked about the problem and this could be any of us. Nobody on this panel is innocent. Nobody in our audience is innocent, right? At any given time, these people who are in our communities, you know, these aren't elected officials. These are journalists in many cases that aren't even from our communities. They could decide to make a story about us. God forbid one of us passes on, like I said before, and they decide that they want to do a hit piece on us. How can poor minority men regain respect after being neg negatively portrayed by careless media reporting? What can we do to make sure these things don't happen? What kind of onus is on us as men and the leaders of our community to make sure that these things don't happen? And I want to throw that question out to anybody. Could I chime in on that one? Sure. Real quick. I appreciate you guys for having this panel, too. Um, how can poor minority men... we First of all, we don't got to put a label on it. We all make mistakes. If anybody, I would say right now, and God forbid, if somebody was to pull up my history, I have weed charges. You going to call me a drug dealer because I got caught with a gram of weed? Or even then, even if I was and did, what does that care? What does that matter about my untimely death? She was trying to purposely desensitize our community. Because she doesn't have a direct connection to it. Right. So we need to just show that we care about those minority men and those men that are in those positions. Regardless of what the other media sources do, we don't give them any play. We know who's going to give a story that's going to send the man off right so his family can have some type of closure so that they can focus on burying the young man without having to worry about going back and forth with racist people in comments, with disrespectful people. Like, they're trying to purposely desensitize us through media. Mm -hmm. And and we have to be bigger than that. We know what our news source is. I'm going to just say it out loud. Channel 5 Ratchet News is for the people. Yes, sir. I'm going to just say it. They, they don't have a... It, it's all about a community-based reporting. When you have community-based reporting, it becomes way more effective because then you think about the next man. Every news source wants to put that in their mission statement, but they barely show it. This starts at ground level. This starts at community cleanups. This starts at givebacks. This starts by showing up to, 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 to local games. This, like, it's the being around the people knowing what makes your community better, knowing what makes your community evoke a response in a positive manner. 
This starts with being a person of the community or an entity of the community. I have yet to see that. Penn Live has been making way more progress because they've been incorporating the people to, to speak to the people. If you've noticed, they had a lot more black journalists, a lot more black editors. Because they know that they don't have an ear to the streets and they know that they know the tactics to report journalism. But all that, those tactics go out the window in certain subjects that you report on. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're trying to revoke a response. And to me, I'm going to agree with him. It wasn't clickbait. Clickbait is just a title to get you to read an article that has some type of substance. It had no substance. It was just a horrible article with a horrible headline. Mm. So is it... Is it that we need more black reporters and more black journalists, or do no, we need, we more, need black, more black or do we need more black people doing better things around the community, Sorry, or both? I feel like I keep interrupting you. I think it's because this is a sub. This is a subject that evokes a lot of emotions out of all of us, and I'm not even going to say black men because Tom's in here. So no offense, Tom. We need more <laughs> strong men that care yes. about the community in general. I like that answer a lot better. So. That's, that's going back to my question, too. Is, there a, is it a matter of, of just we need more black men doing more black media or do we need men standing up and being men and doing better things in the community in general? Okay. Is, that, is, that, is that a better answer? What are your thoughts on that, guys? If I can hop in real quick, um, I think in general uh, in our community, we do need more men um, showing a good representation of ourselves showing the next generation what that means what it looks like but in particular in as it pertains to things like this happening strong individual men don't invoke a lot of change strong unified men do right so men mm, talk get together it. and combine their power that's when change happens and i think how we prevent things like this from happening it does start in discussions like this but it can't end in just discussing right there has to be action steps there has to be um, check-ins, checks and balances, follow through. So if we're going to invoke change, there ha and I don't mean violence by any means, but there has to be consequences for doing things like this to people in our community. And the, in my opinion, the best way to do that is monetarily. Your pockets need to be affected for offending our community like this. Your sponsors need to be notified that you're writing articles like this. Because the only thing that's going to make you change what you do is how you run your business, meaning money. So, unfortunately, we could talk about it all night, but let's say that article bought them more money than they've ever made. They're going to write another one. That's the reality. M mm. Morals aside, because you clearly don't have morals because you wrote that article in the first place. So, we don't need to have that discussion with you. But if the financial situation or your financial reality doesn't change because we put pressure on that in some way, I don't see, I don't see a change in, in, in this, this particular case. She will be out of there. You are so she right, should. sir. She should. Pastor Lamont, what's the most practical spiritual approach to dealing with something like this? The church has had a tremendous amount of influence. This this is a Christian uh, a Christian um, platform, a Cancel Kings. What does the church do to make sure that it's not just about journalism, but it's about men having an impact on communities to make sure that we have a voice to stand against these things? Because as we were looking at this, we talked about Nehemiah. And how Nehemiah was commissioned to go back and build the walls back in Jerusalem. But the people that were there were like, well, why are you coming back here? This, this <laughs> place was destroyed by the enemy. There's no point of coming back here. You guys are you, you guys were defeated. And it's the same thing a lot of times in, in, in our in our communities. You, you're coming back here to fix this. Why do we care? Why do you care? You're, you're, you have no defenses. You're a defeated people. I want to write about whatever I want to write about. And what can you do to stop me? That was the attitude when Nehemiah went back. What can a church do with that spiritual example to turn the tide, especially with men? Prior to that, you know, I just, you know, I, I was, uh, I fell recently. And I was, it took 30 seconds of my life. And it seemed like the whole world was judging 30 seconds of my life. But what happened was, the people of the community, those who knew who I was from the very front of me to the very back of me, spoke up in my defense. They didn't allow 30 seconds to, to, to be my ruling factor. Mm. And the same thing is happening now 
with, with Nassan. Those of us who know who this young man is, my son, as we were doing this, just advised me that he was friends with the young man. Those of us who know who, we are, who he is, when we see articles like this, we need to utilize our venues, whatever venue God has given us, whether it's me in a pulpit or whether it's you on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever venue you, you utilize. We need to speak to the, thing, to the good things that we know about people. We, we, we can't allow people to come and speak negatively about people in our community and just allow that to ride. No, your voice matters. What we're doing right now matters. But it can't stop here, as, as Sherrod was saying, it, it can't stop with this with, with a simple conversation. Those of us who know these people, we have to speak on behalf of these people. And we, we, we also have to be able to teach people the, the, the essence of grace. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's going to need grace at some point in time. So why should anybody be judged according to the worst aspect of, uh, of their life? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, as a church, we need to preach. Rather than trying to preach perfection, we need to preach grace. We need to be mm -hmm. able to tell people, not, not, not just show a finished product, because in the church, we're great at showing a finished product. Mm -hmm. But what, what the people really need is they need to know, who were you prior to this finished product? And how did you get here? We have mm. to be honest about, about our, our journey to the finished place that we're in. If we can be honest about that, I think that, that it doesn't allow people a venue to be able to talk bad about somebody and let's just pile on. There will be people who come to our defense and say, well, yeah, he might have did that, but I know he did this too. Did you talk about how he, how he, took, how, how he would take his kids on the weekend? Did you talk about how he had this job? Mm. You know, so we have, to, we, we, we have to be that voice that balances out. Uh, uh, the, the, the negative things that the, the, that the media who are not vested in this community, the media they write. We got to be the voice that, that balances out these things. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll hey, you know, mm -hmm. hey, real quick, you know, I pass it in my man. I, I feel you, man. Like, you know, my issue is, you know, a lot of times people are so, especially when it comes to the church, man, you know, so afraid to um, be, not to be who you used to be. But to accept, like, hey, I wasn't always where I'm at today. You know what I mean? And it's, it's so many times and so many things that, you know, I have went through where it's like, why, when when you're honest on what you've been through, you can help someone. You know what I mean? If, if you act like you've always been here, you know what I mean? Then you can't help no one because they're like, well, I, I ain't never been there, so it ain't no way I could get there. But if you could tell someone, like, hey, I used to be on drugs. I used to be a drunkard. I used to do A, B, and C. You know, people can relate to you more. You know what I mean? But if you're so afraid to get off the high horse and say who who and what you've really been, you'll, you'll, you'll never, you know what I mean, you'll never change people and we'll never have any change because everybody will feel like, hey, I'm not at that level and there's no way I can get there because I've always been here and they always been there, mm -hmm. you know? Well, one thing we talk about here at Cancel Kings is we, we always focus on what we call like the five Ps. We talk about men being providers, protectors, problem solvers, prophets, and priests. That's what God wants us to be. Ironically, it's also what women want us to be too. Oh, so whenever we, whenever we deal with the men that we mentor on this, on this platform, we're always hammering those things. We think that those are the main things that are, that are going to get our men back. We're basically out of the clearance aisle of life and back into the battle. And I think that's going to be essential. If we're going to turn our communities around, if we're going to make a difference and and fulfill the purpose that God has in our lives, we got to get men where they need to be. And, and I think that's that's going to be essential. So it's it's a long road and a long path that we have. But in order to change our image, just like with Nehemiah, we got to build a wall, not literally like a Trump wall necessarily. But when Nehemiah was dealing with the enemies that were that were confronting him, they didn't take him seriously because his people didn't have a sense of protection for what they believed in. You guys see what I'm saying? If yeah. people are going to take our community seriously, if they're going to take us seriously, we have to have some kind of fortification. We have to have something that we believe in. Or else they'll be able to come in and do whatever they want to roughshod, right? So the, the first thing that we have to do is build something that's worth protecting. 
And I think that's very important. But it's, it's not just going to be conversations like this and then it ends and then the next thing happens. There has to be some boots on the ground and actual actions that bring these things to bear. Thoughts right. on that? Yeah, real real quick. Uh, man, Jimmy, I wanted to throw this to you, man. Um, I just want to talk a little bit. And we can go back to what you were saying, Pancho, but, you know, I mean, when it comes to, you know, dignity and death, right? You know, as being, uh, you know, form, former law enforcer, law officer, you know, what, what, when you when you end up passing away, right, what happens to your charges? Um, once your death certificate signed, I, I would imagine they, they go away. They would just, once you pass away, they're gone. Right. So, so reporting on his, yeah, reporting. Mm -hmm. And something else, we've talked a lot about what, you know, the article and what happened. I hate just rehashing it over and over again, but even his charges, his charges, they were nonviolent. You know, they're nonviolent charges at that, you know, and just that just, that's another level to this reporting. You know, it just, it's so, um, it was just very deceptive, very deceptive. So, go ahead, DK. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's good. And, and Tom, I just want to throw this to you, too, you know, as, you know, being one of our, you know, elected officials, and I know you're as an advocate today, but, you know, wh what is it that, you know, as a community or maybe even you as a as elected official, what, what can you, what can you or what can we do, you know, besides, you know, I know some people talk about boycotting and, you know, and we're speaking out here, but what is, is there any, like, um, thing that we can do to put pressure on these types of media outlets to not do this type of thing? Well, uh, th this one here, um, you know, it, I, I wouldn't really go to, to as far as say media outlet, but let's let's just say um, our local print media and um, our, our broadcast media in this market. Um, over my lifetime, um, basically, I could say every one of them has um, reported something that, that drew pushback for being insensitive um, to a, a person or a group. And um, public, public outcry, um, normally when it's media, doesn't necessarily have to come from elected officials, but the more elected officials that get involved and speak up, um, you know, I shouldn't have any more weight than anybody else on the panel. And, and you know, obviously, um, I, I carry myself that way. I'm, ve I'm very humble. But I have in, in the past, um, and those of you that know me know how I am, I have spoken up about stories. And, and, and uh, my, my daughter, um, Shayla Ellis, is the president of the Board of Commissioners here in Swatara Township. And she uh, noticed that when um, children were missing in the community, they tend to get uh, a story that ran longer or, or had more of a um, crime uh, coverage uh, and, and it seemed to be based on race. So she spoke out on that and then um, it seemed like that changed with, with that particular uh, station. So um, I feel like anytime you, know, you see uh, a, a disparity um, you know, and you speak up, uh, because every, everybody wants to be treated fairly. And, and again, I just want to, on this specific media um, source, I did some some research and, and it seems like they, they grab a story that's out there. They even take um, quotes from personal Facebook pages, uh, not very professional at all. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've been involved with, you know, Matt's stories as far as, far as um, you know, a consumer of what he puts out. But I've also had the opportunity to put some things that, that were, um, you know, positive or newsworthy. And it seems like Matt is not the type who um, stands by something that's wrong. If, if, if he gets misinformation, he corrects it, he updates it. Stories change. I get that. This story, I believe, was an ugly story done for, for an ugly reason. It had a purpose. And, um, you know, I, I don't really want to give this particular one much credibility, but um, just to answer your question, spe speaking up is, is always, always the best thing to do, speaking up and speaking out. Hmm. Who do you think would be the proper person to speak to? It, it may not be the journalist. Maybe it's a journal journalist, Jillian. Maybe it's her editor. In your opinion, and also for Matt, who is the proper center of gravity to take these grievances to? You do know that she's the managing editor of Daily Voice, right? 
for for the region of Dauphin or for the conglomeration that's all throughout the northern northeast? It's it's, it's for different counties. So she's the managing editor, editor for Dauphin. Okay, so is it a matter of talking to her, or is it a matter of talking to her higher ups in, in Connecticut, which I believe they have their headquarters? One of the brothers on this panel <laughs> said, "Hit him where it hurts," and I totally agree. It's 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 kind of like. In my comparison, I know this might sound crazy, but I found this information out that if you start reporting cops for for like traffic infractions to their insurance company, that's what actually starts to get them in trouble. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. So so if we use that comparison synonymous to to news, it would have to be that we have to hit the actual conglomerate up. We got to go to them and say, we're not liking how your managing editor is telling stories in our community and it's creating more uproar and division than it is actually bringing the community together. Is we this a liability see, you're willing to accept? Yes. What, what is their mission statement? Does anybody know what Daily Voice's mission statement is? I had it earlier. And ironically, it was it was loosely affiliated with, you know, supporting the community, blah, blah, blah. You know, what support does that give a community that's stressing, that's grieving? Yeah, that that. That that feels that feels never uh, represented right in the media. Mm -hmm. Like you did nothing but create more division just because you wanted more traction. I kind of and 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not no pity party. I kind of blame it on myself. And the reason why is because I create such a precedent in the area for news to be breaking news that she tried to emulate that, but doesn't have the community backing that I do to get the information rapidly as I have done. So what's the closest thing that you could do to evoke a response out of a whole community? Drag somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what she did. And believe it or not, gentlemen, it worked. Because even though, but like they said, all publicity, negative or positive is good publicity. That's how Ooh. some of these outlets see that. That's how they view that. Not necessarily, I won't even say Channel 5 stands by that because I don't. Nobody wants negative publicity, but everybody is going to have an opinion regardless on what you do. But what she did was wrong. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Some of the solutions that we're hearing are, number one, not just complaining, you know, punching in the air, uh, talking to the people who are in authority. And in some cases, the people who finance and insure these individuals, making a difference at the grassroots level to give um, less oxygen to negative situations by by being men of valor, be, by being uh, men that are involved in our communities. And it was a third one that I heard, too. I think Tom brought it up. Um, refresh my memory, Tom, if, if I'm missing it. But there are some tangible things that we can do that we can that we can we can fix. And also doing things as a community and not, not as lone rangers. I think uh, either Jay, uh, Jay Lynn or Sherrod brought up. So it's not just about talking about things and getting mad and, and then going and watch friends repeat and doing the same thing over it, guys, we got to make a difference. We can't yeah. sustain a community and continue to go through these kind of situations, you know, indefinitely. We, we, we just can't do this. Imagine our kids dealing with this and it's even worse. Right. Yeah. It, real quick punch. And I just want to throw this to um, Jay Lynn and to Sherrod being, you know, I mean, younger members, you know, that's on this panel, you know, uh, what do you think that you guys could do or what do you guys think that needs to be done? You know what I mean? To, to help fix, you know what I mean? Our community when it, when it comes to, you know what I mean? This basically, you know what I mean? Just miss a, a, a dignity and death, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's, that's what's going on. You know what I mean? It's like the media just stripped, it's stripping dignity from someone's death. You know what I mean? You know, what does that say about our society of values? Jalen, if you want to go first or I can go either way. Right. Uh, you, you're first around. Let me ponder on that for a quick yeah. Um, I think a lot of our solutions are in our community are going to start with us first. Um, kind of taking care of the home, uh, to use it as an example, we have to respect uh, our lives and hold ourselves and carry ourselves with dignity. That's not an excuse for other people to not treat us with that. Because I feel like a lot of times when people say, well, people treat you how you let them. 
Yeah, that's true, but that's also kind of like a victim blaming statement. You get what I'm saying? Because just because I let you do that, you still have to have accountability for doing it, right? Um, right. But I think this reestablishing our community identity, um, focusing on nuclear family, uh, having a sense of morality, these are things that are present in our community for generations, right? And I would argue that kind of the place we're in as a community now uh, isn't somewhere that we've been in our history. And that's that's going through trials and tribulations that we don't face today, right? Um, whether we're talking about slavery, Jim Crow, Reconstruction, Black Hole, Vacancy Laws, we still had community. We still had morality. We still had dignity while we weren't allowed to look at certain people in the eyes. We still carried ourselves and still treated ourselves better than we do today sometimes. And I think just reestablishing what normal is, what acceptable is, and that can only be enforced by the men of our community, right? So we have to get together and decide what the new norm is going to be, what's acceptable, what's cool, how do we enforce that, right? And not even through necessarily discipline, but through knowledge, through education, through uplifting. So I think that'll then translate uh, to us being treated better. But also, on the other hand, because I don't think it's solely our responsibility to make others treat us better, um, there's also just some inherent uh, factors that have been in this country since the inception of it. People have been treating us differently since we were brought over here. Uh, some of that's not going to change. Um, there's little we can do about that, but there is something we can do with the personal accountability part, right, as far as changing what we're doing, uh, what our community looks like as far as what's in the scope of our power. Good answer. Oh, it's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a great answer. And I, I have zero tolerance for blaming other people for things that we can control. Mm-hmm. As men, our credibility is our currency. Once we let go of our own credibility, then we, we don't have currency amongst each other and people on the outside looking in. We have to take accountability for our actions, and we have to focus on, on personal responsibility and credibility. So spot on with that, Sherrod. I agree with that 110%. And it's difficult because you may see the whole world falling, around, falling down around you. But one thing we say over here all the time is, in the absence of leadership, you must become one. And that could be difficult. But the only thing you can control every day is your own actions. And But there is no there's no excuses, and there are no... There's no there's no waking up and losing over here in, in, in Team Cancel King. So we really got to we really got to step up and, and, and pull up our pants and be the men that God has assigned us to be. Appreciate that response. Sure. And just to piggyback off a little bit what Sherrod was saying, it's, a, it's going to have to be a partnership in between, you know, setting an example and, you know, getting the word out. I, I definitely do agree that it definitely isn't our responsibility to be recognizing though we still are doing the right thing, but you know, it all comes down to, you know, um, young men like ourselves, you know, and like, you know, Richard, you know, people that do, th- that do things in the community, you know, it comes down to when I'm in the corner store and, you know, young man, just like in the sign or, you know, Wally or Keon, they roll up on me and ask me something or they need something from me, you know, just setting that example in everyday life. And then, you know, media outlets, you know, just like Matt, you know, letting those things being known and, you know, and pushing it out there. And then more people in the broader area, you know, you know, blowing that up saying, Oh, Mr. Jalen's out there doing that. Mr. Richard's out there coaching the basketball team. They just went and won the community team. So that people know that we're out, out here doing these things, because if we're going to be honest, it's not, it's going to come off pretty biased that we come out from ourselves and say, Oh, look at us. Look what we're doing. Good. We're being a good example. It's going to have to come from other people looking out in and us putting ourselves out there yeah. saying, our community's doing these things. We're doing good. You know what I'm saying? And at least for no holes, they can't come in, come at us from any direction. You know, if we're all setting a proper example. Yeah. And in my spirit. <laughs> you know, I have one thing real quick, because Jalen just reminded me of something. Well, um, and this is something I also want to credit Matt for doing. Controlling the narrative, right? Um, if we allow others outside of our communities, outside of our our circles to control the narrative, especially if we're talking national scale, but even semi 
local, regional, whatever like this, if we're not combating those narratives with actual facts, with counter narratives, with proof, with sources, with documentation to prove here's why what you're saying is wrong, what I'm saying is true, then we can't we can fault them, but we also can't cry as much mm -hmm. if we're countering that, right? <laughs> with, with, to, again, to give a shout out with Channel Five Ratchet News, they can't say Matt's lying. That's what y'all call it, Channel Five Ratchet. <laughs> say it again. It's called Channel Five Ratchet. That's what that's what it's, it's called. Yes, Matt, don't Ratchet. mind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah. I'm sure don't mind. He's not. He's not from around here, Matt. Don't mind him. Oh, I, I'm forgetting oh. here. Yeah, yeah. But again, if Matt is at a grassroots level interviewing the source. And somebody else is on an online publication that heard from, heard from, heard from, heard from, heard from, and is going to write three paragraphs. Who are we going to believe? Right? You know, so again, it's about being able to have these platforms and pushing out our mm -hmm. and our stories, telling our own stories. Like Jalen said, if they're not going to cover certain positive aspects, we got to do it. Well, we, it's, it's, we well, can't beg people to do that for us. Well, you bring up a good point. You know, whether it's Channel 5 or whether it's Cancel Kings, there's a line in uh, The Dark Knight. I, I'm a comic book guy, right? And the Joker says, look what I was able to do to this city with um, a little bit of TNT and, and a few sticks of dynamite, right? Nowadays, we have the ability of speaking to an international audience with $20 a month by getting a, a, an account and going online. Look what Channel 5 has been able to do. Look, look what the potential we have to do with this kind of a forum. We can put out our, our own narrative instead of putting out all this foolishness with girls twerking and doing stupid, uh, you know, prank videos and, and interviews talking about, you know, how, how many girls have you had, had sex with? We have potential to do this, gentlemen. We just have to have the will to fight and to get into the battle, right? We can change the narrative that's going on in our communities. All the tools that we need are here. We just have to have the will to do it. So... I really believe that everybody is spot on. We just have to bring it together. I really feel that we have to put a bulwark up, bulwark up and just kind of surround ourselves. You know, you see that phalanx, you know, in uh, ancient Rome or ancient Greece, how they would put together a, a phalanx and, and fight against their enemies. You may not have the entire community or everybody with you. You may have John Travius over here that's doing his thing and, act, and acting a fool. But all you need is a few people who are ready to fight. You look at Gideon. He had all these soldiers that were that, that were there to fight with him, but God told him he only needed a handful of soldiers to do that to do what he needed to do. We had to have that same mindset. We don't need everybody to be on our side. We just need a few people who are willing to be on our side. Right? And can I just chime in and say one of the biggest soldiers in our area is Tom Cook. I have to give that man his flowers. Mm. There's time where he's seen wrongdoing by cops, he will speak up. There's time where he saw wrongdoing by young bulls and he pulled them to the side and said, come on, man, that's not cool. We need somebody who's even who's even temper. We need somebody who speaks to the community, who, who's not afraid, who wants to see change. Yes, he might have to fine tune his delivery a little bit because he speaks with 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 emotion. But you know where he's coming from. And you know what he wants. He wants unity within us. We don't want division. That's not what we want. And for the man that is in the uh, chat, uh, Ratchet, I hate the negative stigma of that word. I actually like the true definition of it. It's a tool to move in irreversible steps. So I'm mm. trying to ratchet down violence, and I'm trying to ratchet up community service. I'm trying to ratchet down police brutality. I'm trying to ratchet up us feeling safe within our community. We have to start using ourselves as tools to do that. We are a vessel. Grown man, boss. Some of you got to deal with. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, we are a vessel. Seriously. Hey, amen, hey, amen. All yeah, right. Um, real quick, but I know um, we got one last segment I want to get to. But um, having heard from Pastor Lamont in a minute, so see where you add. You got something that you want to add right now, man. I just want you to know this forum brings it, it's just what we need to do. We're talking about what do we need to do to counteract the negative uh, media that 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 is done uh, by people, and this is it. You know she, that 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 writer she wrote something negative about the young man, 
But look at how much positive came. I'm looking at some of the um, some of the things that are coming across that people are writing and how their heart is being touched because we're bringing light to the good aspect of the song and how his family is being blessed by what we're doing. This is our way mm-hmm. of combating. This yeah. is our way of fighting back. Who Our voices are valuable. You know, we don't have to let the negative, uh, the negative stigma run, the negative uh, articles be the, the last thing spoken. No, our, our voice matters. And I thank you for this venue because this proves our voice matters. Just like that, when we read that article, it brought our heart, it hurt our hearts. Us talking together as a conglomerate is blessing the hearts of Nassan's family. It's blessing Mm -hmm. the hearts of his friends. It's blessing the hearts of the people of the community that was hurt by his tragic uh, car accident. Mm -hmm. So we're doing what's necessary to reverse the thing that's taking place. And I'm happy to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. We got one more. We got one more. Uh, one more small segment, and we've kind of discussed a lot of this already, guys. Um, but our last question was um, pretty much: What steps can we take to make sure the media respects our community as we, as much as they respect others? Mm. And again, we've kind of discussed eighty percent of this already, and I think it's just an application of a lot of what we said. Does anybody want to want to round third base and, and take it home to? to say some personal experiences, maybe some folks in the audience of things you've done and you want to leave that in the, in the, in the chat. What can we do to thread that needle to make sure that we get that respect that other communities get to make I'll, sure that things go to, go to the extra mile and, and people respect us the same way. Yeah. And, and punch and whoever wants to have it, I'm not going to wrap it up. I just, I wanted to share a story, but I don't want to um, pull it up here because every time I pull up daily voices and messing my computer up, but anyways, um, they had an article, and the gentleman, he uh, is a d- domestic violence situation, and he ends up uh, getting killed by the cops, right? The cops end up killing him. You know, he oh, pulled so out this, a gun. Just, just to clarify, DK, this was another article from Daily Voice. Was it from the same right. all, same journalist? From, yes, from the same journalist, right? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and I'm reading the story, and it's... And I'm thinking, you know, as I'm reading this story, because I never read the story, none of her stories until I read, you know what I mean, the sign story. So, of course, you know, I'm doing some research and I'm reading her story on this. And here, so this guy, you know, gets shot, you know, shot by the cops and he ends up dying. You know, he pulled out a gun on him and, you know, it took appropriate force, you know what I mean? And then they end up killing him, right? So, in her story that she's writing about him, she is, I mean, she's going through, she ends up interviewing the family. She's um, giving, you know, saying how he was this loving husband, this, uh, you know what I mean, whatever, good father, blase, blase. And even, I mean, even at the end of the article, it's like, uh, hey, come donate to his GoFundMe page, right? And I'm like, it just blows my mind, I'm saying. So here she's writing this article. He gets, he pulls a gun on the cops. Gets killed by the cops, and in return, she's putting, "Hey, go, go, go fund this guy's page." But when, it, when we see the science page, it's like, "Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, DK." Oh, now, I can pull it up. I, I, if you if you want me, hold I'll pull on. it back up. I, the horse, the horse was bad enough. <laughs> so, no, and, I'm, I'm being serious. I, I, now, I, hold on. So uh, crazy. That has to be. That has to be, be incompetence. I gotta be lying. I gotta be lying. It has to be incompetence. No, because no I'm gonna say it. White men are allowed to have mental breakdowns and they not and they not be held against them. They are allowed to shoot themselves and still be seen in a light where we have to have some type of sensitivity to it. We are not too far removed from the 1960s. So mm-hmm. they're going to do this in the media. It is up to us to not give them a the voice. That's why that woman is no longer allowed on my platform. Because she had a bigger area that she covered and she had a, a little bit more resources because she's with a bigger station, I used to let her post breaking news in there, what I wasn't able to cover. Once I start seeing now where her articles are going, slowly, and, I mean, slower and slower, I start denying her because I didn't like her. This is, this, this, this is uh, Jillian. 
Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Double. He has been okay. in my group since day one because as a journalist, you want to, I'm interesting to them because I take a totally different approach. But at the same time, they see me as a competitor, but I'm a molehill to these. Oh, hold on, hold on, Matthew. Hold on. I, I gotta I gotta call you out on that. She knows that you're gonna you're gonna catch wind of this kind of stuff. What would give someone the audacity as a human being and also as a journalist to see someone who was the aggressor in a in a in a police officer standoff and still have the audacity to put up a GoFundMe in a news article? <laughs> But yeah, ain't never put up a GoFundMe for all those people that have fires in Dauphin County that were displaced. You don't mm. see none of the local news there. They'll rush to the fire scene. They'll, they, they'll talk to one person to get an interview of what happened. But do they go to the people like before I did, before I went to school and was sitting on Jefferson and Ross and telling them why they were standing there? Look, if you need anything, reach out to the page. Put mm. something on there. Tell them if you need clothes, if you need water, if you need food, reach out. We have to, as a community, we have to hold ourselves accountable to love on each other so that they can't have any say, so they can't have no president. She's no longer ever. She's blocked out of my group. I'm sorry. Mm. You don't get to see what's happening. You don't so, get to, once you did that, you're ex. I don't care. I don't care. There's certain people that once you rub me wrong in media, I don't want to give you a second chance, bro. That just and blows I, my mind. So James, as a, as, as a representative of, of our heroes in blue, how does that strike you knowing that a, a, a journalist that may interview a cop in the future has done something like this that has a, a man who's trying to potentially kill cops and reporting on that story has put up a GoFundMe in an obituary or a police report. How does that make you feel? And, and where's the longevity in that relationship between the cops and the journalists in that kind of a situation? Um, I, well, I saw that article, the one DK is referring to. The, the first day he told me we were going through the page, and I remember seeing it. And it, it just, you know, it kind of, it, it stung. It made it sting a little more when you saw that. But um, as far as the relationship between um, law enforcement and journalism, I can't really speak to the relationship too much, but I know for me, I stopped watching news probably 12 years ago because one day I was at work, saw an incident, saw everything that happened with the incident from start to finish, came home that morning, watched the news, and what I saw reported on the news was completely opposite of what actually occurred. And mm. I, so I, I stepped back and saw that, and I'm like, this, this is crazy. Like, they're not – they're just reporting what they want people to think, you know, and I could see the manipulation, you know, in the reporting at that point. And I was already a little shaky on, on media anyway, so I just – I kind of cut the cord – yeah, like I said, about twelve years ago. I don't so is it so is it, is it an individual media, so. cops way of looking at it? Does, does, does the police chief say don't, nobody talk to to quote unquote Jillian again? Is is it does it stop there or is it a long term relationship breakdown? Because I'm very curious because that just seems crazy to me. I mean, in, in organizations like that, you have protocol. You can't, uh, you know, a police officer, a street cop, or a detective can't speak to the media. You know, you mm -hmm. have to go through a, an actual officer that's assigned to do that. You know the. Uh, the um, public information officer, you know, you'd have to go through them. So there's really not much of a relationship. When, if you're on a scene and you see reporters, we don't, we don't speak to them. So there really is no relationship on that level. You know, it's, it's usually going through one person or it may go through the chief or whoever, but um, Interesting. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I will say over the two years of running like a chicken with his head cut off, that I have gained more respect from the cops because they realize I have no issue with them. I'm just trying to do a job that I created. So I have to bust my ass 10 times harder than that, than that mountain to this molehill. Mm. But you know what but, though, Matthew, you, you, you need that oversight. You know, I know you hear a lot of stuff in the news about people in the community want, you know, uh, public, you know, citizen boards to regulate the cops. I don't know if it should go that far, but you do need oversight because it can happen in any organization. Police, you know, it can happen in any any organization that has, you know, a group of people that work together on a, a daily basis. They start to influence each other. So it happens. Agreed. and You know, you, you definitely need some oversight to keep people in check. I mean, you have checks Agreed. and balances at the highest level of government. So why not have it at other levels of government? So, you know, I, I appreciate what you're doing. I think it, it definitely helps. I appreciate and, you too, and, sir. And I think that's why you probably earned a little bit of the appreciation of the police officers because over time they're seeing 
hey, this might actually help us more than it hurts us. The same as like body cams. Sometimes seeing how people act, you know, kind of plays in the, the law enforcement's favor at, at times, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just, you know, we've been fed, you know, the media's fed us what, what they want us to see. Now with these different forms of media, social media, you know, reporters like Matt, journalists like Matt, you know, we can see what's actually happening. So it's, it's a whole different story and people's eyes are opening up. And we realize we've been manipulated for a long, long mm-hmm. time. You know, so true. I mean, a, a lot of us older people, anybody that's 40 and over, we used to turn the news on and everything we saw, we took as gospel. You know, we were like, oh, okay, that happened. And right. it's what about our day? Now we're realizing most of that stuff wasn't true. For 20, 30 years, we, you know, we've been mm. essentially lied to and, you know, like I said, manipulated and led to where they wanted to lead us to. And now we're here. So we need to... You know, we need to circle around and clean this thing up. Um, somebody mentioned one other thing about um, pulling young men's, you know, collars when, when they're doing stuff, when they're acting out. For whatever reason, that stopped. When we were young, when I was young, some, anybody would step up and grab you and, you know, hmm. put you in your place if you, were, <laughs> if you were stepping out of place. For whatever reason, you know, in our generation, it seems like that, that stopped. So we need to get back to that. We need to get back to calling people out for their behavior you know, and teach these younger guys how to be, you know, the men they're supposed to be, you know, for whatever reason that we missed, there was a little gap there where we missed, you know, um, that connection, but, you know, because we, they're we, misguided. We back to it. I went to well, a scene, but that's our fault. That's our fault though. Cause we, we is, you know, men of my age, for whatever reason, there's that gap where we let it get out of control and whether it, it's not completely our fault, but we definitely have some stake in that. So, we need to do our part to clean it up and fix it. So real quick story. I covered a, a shooting that happened. A young lady was shot right there by like 19 and 19th and North. Uh, my girlfriend comes, pick me up, I hop in the car after doing a report. Young man goes, oh, there goes Matt Moyer. And then I go, hey, what's up? How you doing, young man? He goes, nah, don't you talk to me, you snitch. 20, in front of 20 of his friends, I stood right there face to face with all of them. And I said... You think I'm a snitch? I said, do you even know how media works? Do you know that none of these cops could talk to me? I said, snitch is somebody on the payroll. Do you think that they would pay me to do this? To annoy them mm. by always being here? I said, you you guys are so lost that you don't even know the difference between a, a news reporter and, 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 a, and, a, and a confidential informant. Okay. Like, mm. they're just lost. They're like, in the media, they just think everything that's not you're not telling nobody anything. You're a snitch. It don't make no sense. It doesn't make sense. And the crazy thing is they don't know that their own friend right beside them is the one that's going to give them up, scream and cry, and not want to go in a cell. But yet they're worried about the black man that wants to make change in their community and report so there's no bias in the reporting. Hmm. So we have to be the correction. Yeah, and, and we we had a long discussion about that. And we had a uh, a podcast called Stay or Go. Do you take the time to rebuild your community? Or has it gotten so bad where it's a liability or maybe too dangerous for you to go in and deal with that group of young men? And you go somewhere else and you grow where you're planted. That was a very lively debate that we had. And a lot right. of men are caught. Um, they're caught on, on, on the fence with that particular question. I have resources. I got it out the mud. I'm doing what I need to do. I know how to invest now, whatever the case may be. Do I take all those resources back to my community and try to build it up? And they sitting here trying to lynch me (laughs) or do I take it somewhere else, you know, and start over or just try to do the best I can. And I think that a lot of men in different communities wrestle with that, with that idea. Go ahead. Turn out their cheek. So yeah, that's that's a possibility. Gonna, they yeah, spit but, on Jesus. Who am man. I to not step up for my community? Well, we used to we use those very analogies. We use Nehemiah who went back to rebuild uh, Jerusalem. Right. He had a, a heart to go back to his community and rebuild despite the opposition. And then we also had examples like Joseph, who was kicked out of his community, didn't have an he really couldn't go back. And he had to build where he was planted and really specifically even the black community, even though I don't like talking specifically about the black community all the time, black men are kind of at that crossroads where they're like, you know, I want to go back to the community and build. And then you got another group of black men that are like, man, they, they've been calling me Uncle Tom since I was, you know, 10 years old. I'm out of here. 
So resources are being pulled from two different directions. And me and DK talked about this the other day. We may not be able to reconcile resources being pulled all over the place. You got a, a, a passport bro movement. You got a save yourself black man movement or save your community black man movement. And so the black community is really going through a lot of a lot of ups and downs, a lot of ebbs and flows. And we're not sure where it's going to land because especially the young guys, they don't feel that this problem that they've inherited from from Gen X and Gen uh, in the in the in previous generations is their problem. They feel it's not their issue to deal with. I totally agree that some do feel like that. But I will say this, we are working and it is working. If you don't know the statistics, 2023 was actually one of the, I don't know how to say this, but uh, it was one of the least violent years in over a decade. We're at? In Harrisburg. Okay. Look up the statistics. That is a true statistic. But one that may not be the best, but, but, but holistically, that may not be the same story for Chicago, New York, San Francisco. True. You see what true. I'm saying? So if you look at, you know, men in impoverished communities or minority communities or even white communities that may be poor, they're not dealing with that same kind of, you know, bump. So they're like, hey, I, am I going to stay here and be in guerrilla warfare in Oakland <laughs> or am I getting out of here and taking my resources elsewhere? So this is a this is a question that we don't have good answers to right now. Yeah, We're going you know, to gain that clarity soon. Yes, sir. You know, and um, man, as, as we begin to close this out tonight, man, I appreciate everybody, you know, coming in here. And um, uh, Pastor Lamar, if you don't mind, if you can close this out, give everybody a chance to um, you know, kind of say the last words upon before you throw the music on. But you know, for me, man, you know, everything that we do, you know, especially at Cancel Kings, man, is really to bring, you know people to Christ, man. And, you know, when, when I think about Nassan, one thing that I know about Nassan, you know, for me, you know, when it comes to salvation, right, there, there's just two things, right? And I just pulled it up here, right, is that it's two things that you need to do. You know, you need to confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, right, and you'll be saved. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. And, you know, the second part, you know what I mean, that's between you and God. But I know for sure, for sure, I know 100% sure that, you know what I mean, that the son, you know what I mean, confess with his mouth. You know what I mean? I, I've heard of, I, I heard of myself. So, Amen. you know, no, no one can tell me anything different. I mean, so when, when, when you, when you know that, right, when, when you, when you, when you, when you, I'm saying, I know that, that I'm, I'm not okay with what happened, but I know that this life is, is, is just, half a second of what really eternity is and i know when i get to the other side that i want to be able to see you know what i mean the sign so i i'm not worried about all of that you know what i mean so i, I i'm good with that i've heard that he's gone i you know what i mean i, I heard for tanisha i heard for Mary and i like i i heard for them but i know where he's at you know what i mean so i'm just able to rejoice in that but um we're gonna give everybody a chance to you know what i mean to close out and then, um, Pastor Lamont, if you can close down prayer, we get this up. Right. And I'll, and I'll just put it out there. That I'll, I'll just give some encouraging words out there. And I'll relate it <clears throat> to a little bit you know, in, the, in the music sense. Now, you know, someone's, if someone was to put music out, you know, brand new artists, and they only got about, you know, 50 views or 100 views, somebody may look at, look at you and be like, oh, that's only 100 views, you know, you're not popping or it's not enough. No, um, you need to realize, you know, 50 people is 50 people. You know, 100 people, that's a lot of people. You know, some of us probably can't even name 50 people off the top of our head. So I say that to say, you know, the Bible says, you know, one will reach 1,000, two will reach 10,000. So, you know, if you see it's supposed to be, if whoever's watching this live, if you see the, the unjust of, you know, any young man or any man at all, or any human happening, you know, to share it, you know, put your voice out, don't ever think, just because, you know, if you share it and, you know, you your post isn't getting any looks, that, you know, nothing's happening, you know, something's moving, you know, you could possibly reach, you know, a thousand, and then those two people that you reach, you know, reach 10,000, so I encourage you to never think that your voice is not being heard at all. Amen. Thank you.
I thought this was very not only productive conversation, but gave us uh, action steps to forward. I'm sure we can do those of us that are especially still here in Harrisburg. Um, but again, those watching, uh, first of all, thank y'all. It's, 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 it's up on other stuff, but I was just encourage y'all to stay encouraged. Um, if you don't know what to do, how to find someone who has either a platform, an initiative, a program. Give your time, right? Um, vet who you're giving your time to. Make sure something going directly to the community for the best of it. But it's going to take more than the people you see on this panel. It's going to take the community to save the it may not be everybody, but we do need members from it in order to improve the situation. So if what happened to him touched you, if it affected you, if it bothered you, um, there's something we can do about it other than just be upset. So I think that we need to focus on it. How mm -hmm. do we turn this anger into action and then eventually? Thank you. Got it. You got some last words for us, Matthew? I just appreciate you for the platform. And I'm glad to speak to all you gentlemen. Um, everybody on the panel, if we go all follow each other, um, send me a request. I even go through all the names so I could send you one right back. Um, whatever platform that you use the most, that's where we could connect and engage at. Um, I really like this Cancel Kings, and you talk about things that are prevalent and that actually have some type of substance. So continue, my kings, and see you at the top. Amen. Tom, anything you got for us? Closing words? I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, great panel. Um, you know, just productive uh, conversation um, that actually is coming out of, of, of a bad situation. Um, but I think we're going to make a lot of good out of it. And I'd just like to throw out there, I've been active in the Harrisburg area for 45 years. And um, I think the people that know me, there's, there's no neighborhood that I won't go in to try to help. Um, from the city out in Swatter Township now, but return often. And uh, I want to finish by saying, uh, as far as Matt, good, good, good to see you. Every now and then, I see you in the community. Um, yes, and, uh, and 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 for for Don, Kenny, and uh, James Hawkins, um, I'm thinking back to when we used to spend more time together. As we get older, um, you see people less. So it, it was great to see you two tonight. And, and uh, to, to the host, you did a wonderful job. So so thank you to everybody. Mm. And can I just say something really quick? Tom is a man of action. When they put up all that trash that was in that complex, within a 24-hour turnaround, he had that out of their complex. And they seen that. That man is a man of action. When they said that that, that, that social club was had uh, racist implications, he, he made sure that he got to the bottom of it. It doesn't matter about race. It's about caring. Mm. And he cares. So I want to give you that, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you. James, what you got for us? Uh, I'll be brief. You know, I appreciate you uh, having me on the, the committee tonight. Um, you know, uh, I think everybody contributed a lot of good information. Uh, hopefully it, we can uh, expand on this and, you know, you know, build something and keep, keep this going because, um, the, something has to be out there. We have to put something out there. People have to hear this. You know, we just can't let it fall to the wayside and, you know, fizzle out. So uh, anything you need from me, I'm here to help. I uh, appreciate everybody's uh, um, presence tonight and I uh, appreciate everybody's input. Good job. Justice for Mary Holmes. Amen. Hey, man, I, I, I just thank you guys for um, – chiming in this evening it was a blessing being able to talk with each one of you guys it was a blessing to be on this panel uh, i thank you uh poncho and dk for the work you're doing to draw attention to the things uh like this that are necessary for us to see as a community and know how we can uh, put our hand to and, and be better about um it was, it was a wonderful thing seeing you james Sharak, great to meet you um uh Jaylen, it was good talking to you uh, Tom, we played football against each other back in the day. I don't know if you remember, uh, but uh, and Matt, it's a, it's a, I, I love the work that you're doing. Uh, it's relevant here in the community. So I, I just thank God for each one of you guys, and most importantly, I just I thank God for Nassan's family, and I pray 
that this was a blessing to you. I pray that this gave you some sort of comfort uh, in your hour of grieving. I, pr I pray that this just brought you, you know, lightened your heart um, the best that it could. So uh, I'll, I'll close us in a word of prayer. Um, let us bow our heads. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity you've given us, Father, to come and speak about these things that are necessary to uh, make our community what you have called it to be, Lord God. I ask that why I ask to pray blessings upon each person on this um, venue, Lord God, as we leave from this place, never from your presence. Continue to watch over us, guide us, keep us, protect us as only you can. Father, lead us to be what you have called us to be, Father, and we'll continue to give your name the praise that's due to you and you alone. Lord God, we love you. We love you. And we thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you all, brothers. Sir. All right, y'all, man. We really Let's appreciate come, everybody man. taking the time to um, to join us on this on us on this evening. This has been something that's on our heart, and and really strikes at the core of what we talk about here a lot at Cancel Kings, dealing with men and men's issues. Uh, take some time to like, share, subscribe to the YouTube page, the Facebook page, the Instagram page, the X page, whatever the case may be, and support us. Uh, we appreciate you guys. And we look forward to seeing you uh, next Thursday for our Bible study and our next overtime topic. We'll see you then. Yeah.